Aloha friends, it's Mrs. Rankin. We're about getting ready to start an adventure next week where we're going to be creating some summer science notebooks. And I thought perhaps we should start with a question to get us thinking about what we can do in this notebook. So here's a question I have. How do different scientists use their notebooks? I have some ideas and I've been using a notebook for many years myself. And I know that in school, we use science notebooks in STEAM and in the classroom. But I still thought, hmm, what if we could find out from some other scientists how they use their notebooks? What do their writings help them to understand better about the world? How does this help them to develop new questions and share their findings with others? So let's take a, a look through this book, and then we'll return to our question and jot down every anything we figured out. Notable Notebooks, Scientists and Their Writings. I already have some ideas from these illustrations about some of the branches or types of science that might be reflected in this book. I can see the double helix of the DNA structure, so that tells me maybe we're going to be learning about biologists. Also, I can see a bird. I see some images that make me think of chemistry. I see some... Um, drawings that might help me think about physics or the science of, of flight and matter and how things move on earth. I'm very excited for this book. And here we go. Of all the scientists' tool, objects rare and common, the lowly science notebook is most easily forgotten. Scientists write in notebooks about every plant and crater Notebooks help them understand what they observe in nature. What makes a notebook special? It's a place to think and dream, to write down thoughts and questions about all that you have seen. I can see here some observations about maybe a, a food chain, observations about changes in the earth, weathering of rocks, noticing some parts of a fish, and just thinking about the ways that a scientist think. What's their process like? This person's pretty busy. If you find a science notebook, open it and have a look. You will surely be amazed by what's inside this book. Reading such a notebook is a great way to explore. We can learn so many things from those who came before. That is important to share your findings. Don't believe me? Then let's go. Let's travel through time and see exactly how important one notebook just might be. Who will we see first? Ah, let's visit Galileo back in 1641. He drew inside his notebooks, planets orbiting the sun. In his notebook was a model of thinking that was new. His ideas, though quite correct, were not a welcome view. Galileo was the first person to record what he believed was the movements of the planets around a sun in the center of the solar system. Yeah, the orbiting or the moving in a circular path. Galileo filled up notebooks viewing the night sky, observing moons and stars and comets as they were passing by. Galileo's evidence helped imaginations roam. Other famous scientists looked at things closer to home. Isaac Newton was a genius. He truly did it all. Complex calculations in his notebook he did scrawl. Legend says he thought, aha, under a shady apple tree. Whatever's true, he did define the theory of gravity. Measurements and data convey the greatest wonders, and Sir Isaac Newton's notebooks contain lots and lots of numbers. Math's a part of science, no matter what you do, but other things like drawing can help you learn it too. Wow, and this is an actual page of Isaac Newton's notebook. He was an English scientist, and it's true what the book says. Math is the language of science. Beatrix Potter was an author. She loved to write and draw. 
She also was a scientist who recorded what she saw. Insects, rocks, and fungi all graced her notebook pages. The details in her drawing is a treasure for the ages. Do you recognize the name Beatrix Potter? I think she wrote um, a series of children's books about a rabbit. Mrs. Potter used her talents to answer her own query. Sketching helped her understand the fungi's life quite clearly. Notebooks can be valuable to organize and review. They are also essential when describing something new. But that's true. On the rooftop of a bank, Maria Mitchell could be seen peering through her telescope as part of her routine. On a clear October night, something caught her eye. Could it be a bright new comet she saw zooming by? Indeed, it was, as she had thought, a great discovery. Miss Mitchell, with her careful notes, helped all the world to see. Notebooks aren't just for notes. There's more that you can do. Scientists plan experiments and then conduct them too. There's a photograph of Maria Mitchell in her observatory with a very large telescope. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing to see all the stars and planets? Did you know that insects here, surprising but it's true, before Charles Henry Turner, it was something no one knew. Dr. Turner studied ants and bees and all the ways they act. His experiments uncovered things we now accept as fact. Cockroaches, we know, can learn. Bees see color patterns, too. Without Dr. Turner's notes, we think that insects only flew. A notebook is a place to plan experiments or tests, and also to see patterns in what data could suggest. Aha, so we're going to write results in our notebook and plan experiments we'd like to do. High atop a craggy peak with a notebook and a pen, Dr. Lonnie Thompson surveyed Peru once again. He studied where a glacier lay. Then he looked back in his book. A single glance at early notes was all it then took. This glacier is retreating. There's no doubt at all on that. The world has gotten warmer since the last time I here sat. Scientists craft explanations. They find the missing link. Good thing that in a notebook one can reflect and think. Here is a photo of a glacier that Dr. Lonnie Thompson took in the year 1978. Here is the same glacier in the year 2004. Can you see what he's saying? That the glacier is retreating, it's melting and moving back. Those photographs are very, very strong evidence. In a forest of Gombe, Jane Goodall sat quite still. The chimpanzees were very close, their nearness such a thrill. She observed for many years, described their lives and play. Her notes on their behavior are important still today. Many a page of journal writing helped her understand our relatives, the chimpanzees, and thus her fellow man. Dr. Goodall took her notes in a remote and wild place. Our next scientist's notebooks have been to outer space. And there is Jane Goodall drawing pictures of the chimpanzees she studied in her notebook. She's probably making notes about their behavior or maybe their life cycle. Ellen Ochoa is an astronaut and a brilliant engineer. On four short missions out to space, she explored a vast frontier. Dr. Ochoa used her notebooks to describe her NASA missions. Another set of notebooks fulfilled other great ambitions. So she was a, an astronaut and she went to space and she made a notebook in space. Notebooks hold the story of her various designs. She used many, many pages to think, create, refine. Inventors also use notebooks to plan, design, and dream. Sometimes the results they get are not quite what they seem. The chemist Stephanie Kwolek, her job was to invent. She is now remembered for a happy accident. At first, her best discovery seemed like a big mistake. 
Little did she know she'd found a substance tough to break. Her notebook outlines all the steps for inventing this strong strand of fiber she called Kevlar, which saved lives across the land. Making sense of data can be difficult to do, but if you keep on trying, you might find something new. Kevlar is a super strong nylon fiber because of its strength and light weight, it can be stronger than steel. Some of the things that Kevlar has made possible include body armor, tires, boats, and airplane wings. Amazing. Charles Darwin wrote in his notebook while sailing on a boat. You'd need to use a mirror to read what da Vinci wrote. Marie Curie findings helped develop the x-ray. Did you know her notebook is radioactive still today? Their studies may be different, both in subject and in style, but the modest science notebook has been essential all the while. Gregor Mendel, Albert Einstein, Rachel Carson too, they all relied on their notebooks. Now, what about you? What about you? Here are some ideas. You can start your own science notebook. Choose a notebook. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. Yeah, just like um, I mentioned, I had some old notebooks left over from my kids when they went to school. And this one says top secret, but there's nothing in it. I've started to add some of my test results from last week's virtual steam when we tested acids and acids and bases. And I've left the front page blank so I can do a table of contents, but just an old composition book will do. And then you'll decide what you'd like to study. So we'll do some of this together. We'll get working on some ideas together. And you can see from this illustration, you can cut out pictures from magazines or print things off the internet, and then you add your own questions and observations, some wonderings, some things that you figured out, maybe even some data from testing, and then you'll have something that you can share. Well, that was a wonderful introduction to Science Notebooks. Please uh, go to the next video in this series, and we'll talk about how to design the cover of our notebook, and then we'll get started on making some entries inside. Aloha.